Hello. Welcome to virtual worship service with Sherry Hales Ministries. I'm Sherry Hales. If you've been joining me, you know we always start with worship. A time to clear our mind of clutter, to let go of problems, to cast them on the Lord. So let's just take a moment to worship the Lord today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just worship Him. Think on Him. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. Cast your cares on Him. Just think about the Lord today, how much He loves us. Just worship Him. Hallelujah. Glory. He's so worthy. However you worship God is fine. As long as you're worshiping Him from a place of spirit and truth. You can hum, you can be in silence, you can lift your hands, you can bow your head, however you worship God, as long as it's from a place of spirit and truth, he honors it, he recognizes it, and he receives it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You should feel your problems just lifting away. If you're casting them on God, like he says to do, you should feel the burdens lifting as you are worshiping him and honoring him and letting him know that you need him. You should feel his embrace, his loving embrace. And you should feel your heart drawing closer to God and His drawing closer to you in love. As His presence abides. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We welcome you into this place. We feel your presence. Praise you. We praise you and honor you. We praise you and honor you and bless you. We thank you. We love you. We need you. We look to you, God. We're nothing without you. Thank you for your presence. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will just worship him a few more moments with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for being in this place with us today. I ask that you would just be in this virtual worship service, Lord, and just speak to us. Lord, everything is vain without you. We need direction from you. We need guidance from you. We need a word from you, God. We need your strength and your love. We need to hear from you. Lord, I submit as just a vessel. Just a vessel. Lord, we need to hear from you. Speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Glory be to God. Well, welcome 
to Virtual Worship Service with Sherry Hales Ministries, and I'm Sherry Hales. If you have been joining me, thank you so much for joining me, and I pray that these videos have been a blessing to you. I pray that the Virtual Worship Service has been a blessing to you. And today, um, I want to talk about charity. So the title of the message is The God of Charity. The Bible uses the word charity and the word love interchangeably. So when we're talking about charity, we're also talking about love. So charity is kindness and tolerance and judging others. It is love. It is help that we give. We can give help in many forms, in assistance, in prayer, in money. And we give these things voluntarily to help fill a need. And so Proverbs 14.21 says, Blessed is he who is kind to the needy. Blessed is he who is kind to the needy. That lets us know that when we are kind to the needy, that is a good thing. There is nothing bad about being kind to someone who is in need. And it also lets us know that we are here to help one another. The Lord is not going to literally stretch his hand from heaven to help. He uses people. He uses men and women. To help one another and the Lord is telling us that we are blessed when we are kind to the needy kindness could even be a smile it could be a smile it could be a word of encouragement sometimes that's all a person really needs is encouragement they've gotten to a place where They've told themselves something long enough. But it didn't seem to go the way they thought it would. And they reach a place where they are discouraged. Those are the times when someone coming along, even a stranger, and offering them a word of encouragement. It can help them to see the sun again. To, to see something positive again instead of seeing you know gloom and doom when we are kind there is power in that act power for good power to help power to lift up another power to transform when we are kind there are so many ways that we can be kind. You know, a lot of times when we think about power, sometimes in this world, power seems to be when when someone is, is big and puffed up and, you know, loud. But acts of kindness are acts of strength and acts of power. You can turn someone's life around just by being kind. Especially if you are kind on a consistent basis. You can help a person. You can help an animal. You can even help vegetation and the earth with kindness. When you are kind and out of kindness you, you extend what need is there the help to fill that need kindness causes you to do something it actually even gives you a reason a reason to be it helps to validate you as a person as well because when you are kind you give yourself a reason to be you give yourself something 
valuable to do. You give yourself a purpose. Kindness not only helps the receiver, but it helps the giver. And this tells us in Proverbs 14, 21. Blessed is he who is kind to the needy. And Proverbs 28, 27 says, He who gives to the poor will lack nothing. But he who closes his eyes to them receives many curses. You know, poor can be not only poor in money or resources, you can be poor in love. You can be a person that is so filled with, with hate, with anger, with rage, with meanness towards other people that you are literally poor when it comes to love. The answer to that is love is to give love. People a lot of times when they are filled up with hate, it is because they are lacking in love somewhere, somehow. And sometimes those that are close to them can help to love them out of that meanness. It's hard to do, but if you can do it, what an amazing thing. Because a lot of times people that are poor in love, they don't realize that they are robbing themselves more than anyone else. Because the anger that, that's filling them up is experienced by them more than it is by any other person because they are carrying it around. And although they may not look at it that way, but it is corroding them within. Hatred corrodes and it corrupts and it destroys. It destroys opportunities for good relationships with others, to get to know people, to get to call someone a friend instead of a foe. Why would anybody choose to build up foes instead of building up friendships why just decide to hate especially blanket hatred when you could have friends instead of having foes and so sometimes people are poor in love and Proverbs 19:17, he who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward him for what he has done the Lord is letting you know that when you are kind to someone who is in need you are actually doing a favor to God how powerful is that that you can actually do something that God considers a favor. So often we are looking to God for favor. For him to favor us. For him to bless us with favor. We want God to favor us. But we can also favor God. Proverbs 19.17 He who is kind to the poor lends to the Lord. When you are lending to someone, you are doing them a favor. And so you are doing a favor to God and he is promising that he will reward him for what he has done. What an amazing thing. So charity. Charity is something that can lift someone who has gotten to the place where they are downtrodden where they don't see any more hope, where they just have given up.
but kindness can lift a person from that. Kindness can cause a person to replace hatred with love. Kindness. When we are kind to the needy, we are doing a favor to the Lord. Kindness is important and kindness is powerful. And I want to read a psalm. I want to read um, Psalm 41 and I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And that would not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die, and his name perish? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurts. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lift up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy does not triumph over me. And as for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen and amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. And I would also like to read a poem. As um, some of you may know that may have been watching some of the videos, you know that I do write poetry and that my books are available on Amazon and that I write children's books as well and they are on Amazon. So the poem that I'm going to read is from um, my book Ministry Via Poetry and it is called Love Covers. There is a verse in the Bible that tells us love covers over a multitude of sins. This poem says, the capacity to love, mystical, beyond compare. Beholder and beholden become a sacred pair. A gift of immeasurable value, its cost, play, cannot understand a present in the present to present the best of man now love your fellow fellow the utmost virtue brings good tidings and goodwill cap a city in charity and cover a multitude of sins. And that was Love Covers from my book Ministry via Poetry. And so I do hope that you enjoyed this message today, this brief message. And I do also want to say the sinner's prayer for anyone who may not know the Lord and you want to get to know him. You are not saved, but you want to be saved. If that is true for you, repeat this prayer after me. That's all it takes is a prayer from a sincere heart. Dear God in heaven, I come to you today to answer the call of salvation. I admit that I'm a sinner in need of salvation. I admit that I am lost in need of guidance and direction. 
I come to you today to repent of my sins, which means I turn away from them and go in a different direction. God, please forgive my every sin. Come into my heart. Be my personal Lord and Savior. I know that in being my Savior, you save my soul and redeem me from the penalty of sin. I know that in being my Lord, I must learn of you. I must follow you and be one with you in covenant. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, that you are now my Lord and Savior and I am now born again. A new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer, you are saved. Luke 15 10 tells us that heaven and the angels rejoice when even one sinner repents. So that means there is a party going on in heaven for you right now. A birthday party, a born again party. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and welcome to the family of God. And if you don't have a church home that you attend or a ministry that you follow along with, I welcome you. Follow along with our ministry. The website is on in the description, so you can visit the website. We have Bible teaching, Bible study, prayer, and virtual worship service. I do pray that this this has been a blessing to you. I ask that the Father that the Lord will bless you, keep you, that He will make His face shine upon you, that He will be gracious to you, lift up His countenance upon you, and give you peace. Until the next time, be blessed and walk with God.